Hey, what's going on, guys? So this message is going to be for anyone who is sitting a lot. This is actually going to be a recap from a coaching call that I just had. And this person is someone who is now new to working out. So we just started working out probably about six weeks ago. And this is coming from no exercise. So we were able to attack flexibility. We were able to attack strength. We got cardiovascular work in now, diet nutrition. However, she started out with some scoliosis as well and also had a little bit of left knee pain. So she told me today that she recently went out for a walk with a friend of hers, two friends of hers uh, last night. Walk was fine. She finished up the walk, immediately had to get into about an hour of work on the computer. So as soon as she came in, sat down to the computer and got to work for about an hour. As soon as she got up, she started feeling pain in the left knee. And then within a half an hour, her back seized up. And it had been about 12 hours or so. It just hadn't gone away. So we started, so, you know, she couldn't take the group class, of course. So I was like, let's go ahead and meet afterwards. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's going on. And so we talked about understanding she's got a new body now. So for a long time, she's been sitting at a desk working, sedentary, just like many of you. And the problem is when you're in that sedentary state for too long, your glutes are going to get weaker. Your hamstrings are going to get shorter. Your quads are going to get over lengthened. Your hip flexors are going to get tight. But what happens is your body's not expecting you to do anything about it. It's not saying, okay, well, you're going to stretch me tonight. You're going to work me tonight. It's saying, this is my job now. Muscles all of a sudden become cushions and basically try to make that sedentary position more comfortable. So I all of a sudden come around, making her stretch the muscles that are short and tight, making her work the muscles that are lengthened and weak. And what happens as a result, the body finds its balance. Now, if you then throw the body out of balance or do something that was uh, maybe common before you got into this new balance, your body is going to react. And not to say that this is guaranteed what's happening for each person. However, your body is going to start to tighten up. Now, whenever I hear knee pain, I automatically think of the quadriceps. When I hear of lower back pain, I automatically think of the glutes and hip flexors. So let me kind of break down what some of this is. And so what I'm going to do is just share my screen here. And the goal here is to kind of give you some visuals of what I'm talking about. So the first thing I mentioned was those hip flexors. Uh, we can use this one, right? So you can see how the hip flexors are attached below. This is your femur. This is a bone that goes right into your hip. And then it is actually attached up to the top, right in that lower back. So this is not the front of the body. This muscle is actually traveling posterior and it's attaching to that lower back. So you can imagine if this muscle was tight, it would pull that lower back forward, right? It'd kind of give it that cave. So when we look at this, I'm gonna see if I can show you an anterior pelvic tilt from the side. As you can see, this is kind of angled down, right? Versus this one, which is flat. Can you see that difference there? There's another one. So this finger here is on something called an ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. And this one is on the PSIS, the P posterior superior iliac spine. Whenever the anterior is lower, that's telling us that's an anterior tilt. Now, remember that muscle that was in there, right? It's traveling almost this path here. If that muscle is tight, it's going to pull this ASIS down towards the floor. That's going to create that curve there and create that curve there. The problem is, where do you think that the pain would be? If you ever heard of like what it's like to hyperextend your back, we're starting to get into that hyperextension. So of course, the pain is going to be there. You may feel some tightness here, but this is what we call, this is what we're talking about when we talk about referred pain. Again, here's a really good example, that tight hip flexor and that lower lumbar area is also very weak because it's just being so hyperextended. It's not being activated the way that it should be. So when the hip flexors get tight, it's going to pull on that lower back. Then we also were looking at her quadriceps. Quadriceps could be tight. Anytime I'm hearing knee pain, I'm always thinking quads are tight. So look at the quads here. We have the belly of the muscle above, but then it all passes over top of that knee in tendon. And then there's also ligaments that go deeper into the knee. But when these quadricep muscles are tight, they're automatically going to pull up here and down here. There's something called an insertion and an origin when it comes to muscles. 
So the origin is the area that doesn't move. It's like a fixed position. And the insertion inserts into an area that does move. So it's a moving, moving part. So that means automatically the pain is going to be at either one of those two starting points. So again, if I'm looking at lower back pain or knee pain, these muscles are likely involved. And then the last ones that I had mentioned were those glutes. And I guess we don't need the max, but we can get us a good side view, right? Look at how these glutes here support the lower back and the posterior side of the body. If we're sitting on these muscles all the time, they're not going to be strong. They're going to, in essence, become cushions to make sure that this whole entire, entire area is supported. It's not thinking, okay, I need to be strong to hold the body up. I need to be soft and cushiony to support the spine while it's basically sitting on me all day. So if you're like in a sedentary uh, position for work or for life or whatever it is, I know we'll get a good image here of now these are, for, are as bad as it gets because everyone's laying down. So this brings in a whole nother world of trouble, but I'm trying to use the example of sitting at a desk for too long. Now you can see all of these people who are sitting, look at this angle in the hips and then the angle in the knee, both come to about 90 degrees. So that means that we're sitting on those glutes and that means that we're sitting on those hamstrings. Those hamstrings really stretch out when that leg is long. And then the quadriceps are actually contracted when the leg is short. So if the leg is stretched out in that position, it's actually stretching that quad the whole entire time. That was a dog shake. <laughs> um, but think about it. Like if you're, if you're in that seated position for too long and you were just in a standing position, walking around, exercising, all these muscles of the lower body, all those muscles are activated and they just enjoyed that workout from the walk that you were just doing. Now, if you then automatically go sit on them, the first 10 to 20 to 30 minutes post-workout, your body is slowly starting to try and recover. It's trying to put itself in a position where the muscles are not too tight or not too stretched and it just wants to heal. But automatically going into that seated position is gonna bend that knee so it's gonna hyper stretch those quads. It's gonna shorten that hamstring because the hamstring is nice and long when the leg is straight, but when the knee is bent, it shortens that up. And then of course, we're sitting on those glutes, another situation that's gonna make those glutes soft like cushions. So the muscles after just having the workout, now all of a sudden need to try and recover when they're in their not most optimal state, I guess you can say. And then what do you think happens as soon as you stand back up, right? As soon as you stand back up, you're now straightening all of that. So look at this image here, okay? So we don't even have to talk about the upper half and all the pain that is in the neck and shoulders for this person, but look at what's happening here for, of course, the glutes and the knee. This, we're not gonna get as big of an image as I was looking for. However, as soon as this person stands up, those hip flexors we were talking about are gonna get hyper-stretched. Those hamstrings in the back that are being short because they're bent are gonna get hyper-stretched. And then all of a sudden the glutes have to activate out of nowhere. So you have all of a sudden hyper-stretched hip flexors, you have hyper-stretched hamstrings, and then you're activating glutes with nothing else in the leg being prepared for it. So the first, first thing that's going to happen is it's going to pull that pelvis down. Then it's going to tighten up that left knee. Now, of course, if you're in a scoliosis position as well, if you've never seen what that looks like, there's an S curvature in the spine. And so naturally, somebody's going to have shortened, congested muscles on one side and then lengthened muscles on the other side. And so that means if they're doing just regular classic deadlifts, there's two different things going on in the same region of the body. So that means that we need to address that as well. So we need to address strengthening the lengthened side and we need to address lengthening the shortened side. Does that make sense? Here's a good image of a scoliotic, scoliotic sign and the normal spine. The challenge here is again, you see that curvature. Now, if you're going right into a seated position, and the body is not ready and prepped for it, you're not only gonna have imbalance from right to left, but you're also gonna have an imbalance from front to back. As we can see here, scoliosis doesn't really, you can't see it from the side, right? 
But remember that anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. If you are in a situation where you have scoliosis and a pelvic tilt, I wonder if uh, without getting too crazy in the images to make it too confusing, but you remember how we talked about, okay, so here's a good example. So you can see how we have a hip hike on one side and a hip drop on the other side. So you can see that difference there, right? Now, not everybody that has scoliosis has the hip hike and hip drop, but also at the same time, not everybody that has the hip drop and hip hike has scoliosis. So it shows you that the pelvis moves freely. And basically everything that we do is either going to move the pelvis in a direction you want it to move or move the pelvis in a direction you don't want it to move. So remember, my point of this whole thing is if you're in, if you're already exercising, if you're already in a position where you're stretching certain muscles out and you're training certain muscles on a regular basis, if you put yourself in a position where you're sedentary for eight hours, 10 hours, you have to address that. And if you're going to put yourself in a position where you're seated after working out, you have got to balance your muscles before you get into that seated position. Because as soon as you get up, remember, they were nice and loose and lubricated and energized muscles when you sat down. They're just going to slowly settle down to whatever position you put them in. It's like doing a whole bunch of bicep curls, whole bunch of them, and then just holding your hand like this for an hour. What do you think is going to happen the first time that you let go of your head and stretch out that arm? If you do it that fast, there's a likelihood that something in here is going to pull and you're going to feel that tight tension. And what happens when a bicep gives you problems is it normally shoots right up to that bicep tendon and gives you problems in the front of that shoulder. So it's just the same thing. Every muscle is the same. You need to warm it up properly. You need to work it and you need to cool it down properly. So again, if you're in a position where you're just used to being in a seated position all day long, you get up and stretch then you gotta make sure that you're also combating that excess stretching. Stretching can be good, stretching can also be bad. If you're in this seated position all day long, and we talked about how the quad stretches over that knee, if you then stretch that quad even more before your workout, you're not addressing the hamstring or the glutes or the hip flexors, the muscles that actually needed to be stretched. In essence, you're lengthening an already lengthened muscle. So when you then try to go do a squat, don't you think that whether it's a quadricep dominant squat or a hamstring dominant squat or even a glute dominant squat, don't you think that would change depending on how tight the muscles are for that day? So a good example I'll give you, and that's what I'll finish it with today, is I obviously many of you know met me in Maryland. I drove down to Florida. If you didn't know, and I met, you met me in Florida. I've driven up and down from Maryland to Florida many times. And when I first did it, the very first time I did it, I just did the trip straight through. And for the rest, for probably like four days when I was first here down in Florida, my left knee, same situation, my left knee was killing me and my lower back was bothering me like crazy. And so I had to do my routine. I had to stretch out my hamstrings. I had to work my glutes. I had to get my hip flexors back in action. I had to open up my back from all the congestion from sitting for that long. I had to stretch the muscles of the front of my body because I was just driving and rounded for so long. And I finally after like three or four days, finally brought myself back to homeostasis, brought myself back to the balance. So what I started doing, the, the very next trip, I brought one of the um, percussion instruments. I brought one of the massage guns with me. And I decided, I was like, okay, I have to stop and get gas four times. So every time, or not four, three or four times, every time I have to stop the car, my goal is to get out of the car, do some squats, stretch my hamstrings, stretch my hip flexors, and then use that percussion gun to wake up my quads and wake up my glutes. You never use that gun in your lower back and it can be kind of dangerous doing it in this area too. But remember, these areas are tight, so we don't wanna make them more agitated. We wanna open them up. So I just went with that routine and went with that balance and it, the first trip, it made a dramatic difference, zero pain. And so I've made that trip multiple times from this point in time. And so now I do that, I make sure I stop. And I, because I stretch on a regular basis, I train my body on a regular basis because I'm doing so much of that. If I even sit for an hour, two hours, three hours, I can feel it in my hips, right? My body is so used to training on a regular basis that 
you know, just what I can, if I just sit for two, three hours, it can make me feel like someone who's been sitting for eight hours. And then I sit and think, it's like, I can't imagine someone who's been sitting for 40 years. Now, when you start stretching and start working those muscles, it's going to be tough. But then you'll notice a lot of that pain just kind of just isn't there anymore. And then you'll be like, then you'll sit for a ball game and you'll get up and you'll feel super sore. And you'll just be like, what the heck? I've been training. I've been stretching. How am I this, this tight? It's because you went from finally finding balance to then again, throwing yourself in imbalance. And something like a ball game is a perfect example because your emotions are attached to something else. You're not even thinking about, you know, do I need to stretch? Right. You don't even think about it. So like things can really easily catch up with you. Same thing if you're at work for eight to 10 hours a day. Stuff can really catch up really fast. So just sit there and make sure that you're open things up. I got a good video on this page that'll show you a quick 10 minute routine on what you can do to help stretch some of the muscles if you're sitting at a desk for a long period of time. But if you can't figure it out, if just watching a simple video is really not cutting it for you, then maybe you just got to find a coach. Maybe we got to actually talk about what's going on in the system and, and what stretches you're missing and what activation exercises you're missing. So let's break some of that stuff down. Happy to help you. I hope that this story helped you. And I hope that some of those visuals helped you there. Uh, if you liked it, comment down below. Let me know uh, if it's something you've if struggled with, if it's something that you're looking for help with, if this video even helped you. I'm looking to do much more educational type videos because every day I have a coaching call and I always think to myself, man, I should have recorded that. So I'm just going to constantly be hitting you with information and uh, really answering as many questions as I have. So thanks for your time and attention and I'll see you soon. Bye.